today we will talk about some basics about spatial analysis in GIS. Uh, if you look at this map, um, the map on the left side uh, is a map with all the grocery stores in Columbus, Ohio, overlaps with the sensor tracks. On the right, it is a summary of the number of grocery stores in each sensor track. And obviously, the map B on the right side is more informative because it tells you the concentration of the grocery stores in this area. So how can we make a map from map A to map B? That is the lab we are going to do for this assignment. And then for the next step, I will go to Blackboard and download all the data needed for this assignment. And this is uh, the data I just downloaded. And I will just copy all the files and then paste to the folder created under U drive. So this is my U drive. Under the GIS folder, I will create another folder called A6. And then I will paste all the files I downloaded, just as what we did for the last file assignment. And if you look at this folder, there are actually two shape files. Um, one is called Columbus, another is called um, Grocery Stores. So obviously, one is for the sensor tracks of Columbus, the other is all the grocery, st go grocery stores um, in this area. And we will look at those two files in ArcGIS. Then open the ArcGIS ArcMap on your computer and then add those two files. Add and then find the folder under U drive. Well, after the two files are added, you can see the first file is the, all the grocery stores within this area. The second file is uh, sensor tracks in Columbus, Ohio. So when I work with the GIS project, I normally like to look at the attribute tables of the uh, shape files and to see if there are data needed for the project. So let's take a look at the uh, the attribute tables of the two shape files first. Columbus, right click the Columbus and add, open the attribute table. And uh, here you will see a list of attributes included in this uh, layer. And uh, for example, we have population 2010, we have uh, the population of males as well as females in each sensor tract. Uh, if you right click the field, mm, and choose the statistics. You can see the summary of the field, the data um, for the field. Uh, so this has the minimal as well as the maximal number of population for all sensor tracks, as well as the sum as mean the mean or the average population. And the right side is the frequency distribution, which is a his also called the histogram. Uh, for the data. Well, the other data about grocery stores in this area is more interesting. This data is acquired from my dissertation research, so let's, let's take a look at it. Open the attribute table, you will see a list of grocery stores in this area, including Walmart, Kroger, Giant Eagle, as well as other smaller retailers. And uh, this data is actually a commer commercial data set and it, it is very uh, confidential. If you look at the field included, it has all the sales values, uh, the number of employees, the employee size, as well as um, the, the square feet um, by categories. Well, you can also do a summary uh, by selecting um, a field. And if we want to summarize the number of stores by sensor tract, we will use a GIS module called Tabulate Intersection. So how can we find this module? The module is under Windows, Search. So under the search, uh, we type in 
tabulate intersection. And the first analysis tool is what we need. Just click on it. And then the dialog box is kind of complicated. The input zone features are the feature of the, um, the boundaries, such as sensor tract, zip code zones, as well as state boundaries, depending on your research question. So here we will choose Columbus as the input zone features. And next, zone fields. It is the ID of the uh, zone feature. We just choose FID right in here. And the next is the input class feature. Class feature means the feature you want to summarize. I would say this is a grocery store. This gives you, um, you know, the central feature you want to summarize. And we keep the output feature, output table as the default. And then we go all the way down and we don't, you know, change anything here. And we click on OK. And after a couple of seconds, the stores will be summarized uh, in a table. So this is a table um, of the results of summarization. And uh, the table, uh, in order to take a look at the table, we right-click the table and open it. If you look at it, um, the FID here is actually uh, the FID of the sensor tract. And the, the PNT count is the number of grocery stores uh, within each sensor tract. And you can see some of the FIDs are missing. For example, the first one is FID 6. This means FID 1 through FID 5. All these five sensor tracks have no stores within them. So you can see some of these uh, FIDs are missing. That means there are no stores within those FIDs. As this is only a table, it doesn't give us uh, the information on the map. We, we need to link this table to the existing file, which is a sensor track layer. So how can we do that? We close the table and right-click the Columbus, which is a sensor track um, layer. We use join and the join. Now we want to join the sensor track, the Columbus layer, with the table we generated using the same FID. So FID of the, uh, the Columbus uh, layer will be joined to the, this table based on the same FID. So we can see the number of stores uh, on the map. And OK, we keep all the records and OK. And now the two tables are joined. If you look at the attribute table of Columbus, uh, in the far end of this table, you will see there are four added fields. So those are the number of the PNT count are the number of grocery stores within the sensor tract. So how can we make a map showing the distribution of food stores? It is pretty simple. It's like what you made for your other population maps or road maps. Right-click the Columbus layer, open the properties, and then under the symbology, we use the, uh, the category called categories. As, and then we select the, the PNT count, which is a number of grocery stores. Then we add all values as we added the values for our um, the highways or local roads in one of our labs. If you see here, uh, we have all the values. And then you can change some of the value. For example, uh, number four would be four, four, uh, four grocery stores. So ma we make it a darker color, such as red. 
and then we change number three to orange and the number two to maybe a, a light orange mango and then we number one to yellow and then if none this is none this means there are no stores so we change this to white and we check out the we check off the all other values and apply then a map with all the showing the distribution of stores uh, is finalized and you can also go to the layout view to add all the map elements such as title, scale bar, north arrow and your name you can also use the uh, the change layout view and the, the template to customize your map well and I think you already understand how to make the map using the templates so I'm not going to um, give you more details and I think uh, this lab is pretty straightforward and it is very uh, informative so if you have a base map such as sensor track and also you have the distribution of the uh, of a feature such as the fire department you can summarize and tell people which neighborhood has a higher concentration of the point feature and which neighborhood has a gap where there's no existing fire department or hospitals and uh, this gives your readers a better idea of the distribution of point data and uh, that's all for this lab if you have any question please let me know by email Thank you.